think to answer that question, you first have to go back a few years. Um, if I look back to when I was last at sea, maybe sort of 10 years ago, a little more than that, uh, it, it was fairly safe floating remotely on a vessel out in the ocean. Very little uh, connectivity, very basic, you know, some email and a, and a sat phone to occasionally call home. If you fast forward now to today, and we see a huge exponential increase in data consumption on onboard vessels. Indeed, last year alone, we saw a 37% increase in data consumption on uh, commercial vessels using the Imarsat um, network. Uh, and that's following trends such as you know, digitalization and, and um, you know, crew welfare, which are uh, absolutely right to, uh, to follow those. However, that does introduce significant risk uh, alongside those benefits. Um, which we need to make sure we're guarded against. So if we look at the capability of um, shipping operators to cope with that threat, uh, I think you see a big difference across the industry. You see uh, some of the big names who will have very mature IT capabilities and uh, really good, robust and resilient uh, cultures. Uh, but then you'll also see operators who don't have the budget for that level of, of security. Um, so it's very important that we are providing you know, the right tools and encouraging the right behaviours across the whole industry uh, and I think regulation is, is very much starting to drive that and bring that basic level of uh, resilience up to a, to a good standard um, but you, you can't sort of get away from the need for a risk managed approach on board uh, the vessel. So I think the, the first thing to say is that we very much practice what we preach. Um, within our, our own network, we adopt you know, military grade technology processes to make sure that our own network infrastructure is safe, secure, uh, and that our people and our culture is also resilient to, um, to cyber. Um, now, we also provide a cyber security as a service, uh, and that's very much tailored to maritime. So we provide to our customers uh, an endpoint and a UTM, security uh, and we make sure that that's kept up to date with the fast evolving uh, threat. Uh, we also make sure that we keep adding to it modules to help with incoming uh, regulations such as the upcoming UR 26 and 27. Uh, and the last thing to say is we very much make sure that we're collaborating across the whole industry of maritime stakeholders so that we're promoting together in a joined up way uh, that resilience that organisations need in, in the modern day era. Uh, well, I think the obvious place to start is with people, and I think people are generally viewed as the weakest link in any sort of set of defences. Um, and indeed, if we look at the uh, attacks that we see uh, from our security operations centre that supports the, the Fleet Secure um, solution, then we see about 80% typically of all attacks are down to phishing attacks and targeting people. So it's absolutely vital that people are sort of, uh, you know, vigilant and aware of the threat. Um, and I think, you know, if we ran some simulations on vessels to uh, see how people responded, you know, perhaps that might be alarming to see what level of opening rates we see on, on phishing attacks and so on. Um, the other area that I think is worth mentioning when we talk about trends is, you know, with the capacity, with, with the bandwidth and lower latencies that we're seeing with LEO uh, introduction over the last couple of years, you know, whilst that brings great benefit to the business, it also enables, um, you know, cyber criminals, hackers to start using automated scripts and tools much, much easier. So as a result of that, I think we also see uh, increasing uh, threats in general and increasing volumes of attacks. Well, I think the first thing to note is it's very important to have a really good training program for people. It's absolutely vital that people throughout the whole organisation uh, receive training to increase their cyber awareness and vigilance, um, but not just once. You can't just train and then forget and expect people to do, you know, do the right thing. You have to keep updating your training, you have to revise it, make sure it's up to date with all the latest threats you have to rehearse it and keep on practice. So it's very important that you keep repeating that training so that people's awareness and vigilance keeps building and, and helping the organization become more resilient. Um, 
I think in terms of what we're doing, well, we specifically, we provide a uh, cyber security awareness training package as part of our solution. We do that free of charge as, as to all our Fleet Secure uh, subscribers to very much try and help with that. Um, and then I think the last thing to note is the importance of culture in the organisation for cyber. And I think there's two aspects to this. I think the first aspect is very much having a no blame culture so people can report an attack quite quickly and, and not have fear of reprisal and that will help the organization to get back up and running in the you know in the aftermath of, of an attack and i think the second part is that we really need to start building cyber security into you know our culture on board the vessel in terms of uh, toolbox talks in terms of drilling uh, cyber security incidents um, just like you would for you know, a fire in the engine room, you know, we should be drilling a cyber attack and, and seeing how the crew respond to it. And then helping to refine that response so that, you know, that again improves the resilience of the whole organization.